MR2 Bargain Boost Part 4. This part is going to be all about boost control. Uh, in the last part, we took it for a drive and we realised that the boost is all over the shop. It's spiking right up. We're making a bar. We're going to blow it up. So we need to get it under control. What we're going to do is we're going to pour out the wastegate in the turbo and we're going to change the spring in the actuator and then we're going to see how that behaves for us. We'll do a bit of driving. We'll data log it. Let's see if we can actually get in control of the boost. Now, if you Google around and search YouTube, you'll find a lot of people with these max speeding rod turbos and they all seem to have the same problem, massive boost creep. Now, I just think that that wastegate hole is way too small. So we're gonna get the turbo off, we're gonna bore that hole out, then we're gonna change the spring in the actuator and let's see if that solves our problem. So let's get on with part four. So we're going to try and take this uh, wastegate actuator off, which you can just about see there. So the actuator is off the car. Um, I had to take the eyelet off to fit it through the hole, but we'll undo these six fittings here and then uh, see if the spring fits. So what's this? 0.3 bar. Now I'm hoping with the boost control we can control the solenoid um, to not allow any boost into the diaphragm until our chosen point. But because it's a 0.3 bar spring, a third of a bar, that should allow us to control the boost lower. Because you can never have the boost lower than the spring rate. So if you had like a two bar spring in there, you're never going to be able to make any less than two bar of boost. This is a mechanical control system. It's just got a solenoid in the middle of it that allows you to raise the boost control. So if you've got a half a bar spring in, you could probably control it to like one bar. But then your next problem is the pressure on the wastegate itself will start overcoming the spring in here. So you can't just have a really low spring because then the exhaust gases will be pushing it open instead for you. So there's a there's a compromise in this mechanical mechanism. So we've got to this stage, we've got this exhaust hot side off, just the casting with the wastegate in it. And what we need to do is bore out that wastegate orifice in there. So when this door opens, it's going to give us more, more bandwidth, more, more throughput capacity to get the exhaust gases. So they will bypass the, the actual turbine itself. They can just come straight out of there and go through the little hole in the side. So we'll get on the die grinder. I've marked, I've marked off the gasket edge here because I thought while this is off, 
we might port match this to fit the manifold because we've got a fair bit of meat here that's basically a lip and then with the same strategy I thought if we if we just scribe a line roughly here so we know where the flapper is this is all a bit crude isn't it but so if we just draw a line like that we know that that's the edge of the flapper so we can measure an amount and not overstep the edge of the flapper so I reckon we need about something like that is where we're aiming for I don't know if you can see it, but I can just about see a crack line forming just there. So that must mean we've got rid of the weld. So what we'll do is we'll mark it up. And then when we weld it back on, we'll align that weld. Looks promising. There we go. So it seems to be about 16 millimetres goes through it. 16 goes through, 18 doesn't. So I wonder if we could just go, just drill it out with that. It's only going to be cast. It can't be very hard. Right, here goes nothing. Right then, that's interesting. So, what size is that? We are just getting to the biggest one. So it's about, I'd say it's probably 17 mil to start with. We've just drilled out to 18 to get us to there. And now we'll run through with 20. That's a good idea. Yeah, can you see the... So a little bit of die grinding later, we've got the wastegate hole orifice that big, however big that big is. Let's see if we can get a rough measurement with the verniers. So now we're to 20, 23 mil, something like that in one direction. 22, 23 millimeters, something like that. It's a bit oval because the wall is thinner in certain places so it grinds a lot easier so it's very hard to achieve a good circle but you can see our outline our little scratchy outline so we're well within that we've got a good five mil lap even there but we've got probably more like seven mil there so that should seal up still so now what we need to do is get this welded back on and we'll keep our reference mark in the same place let me see if i can get this jigged up Right then, let's try and put this back together. OK, 
Okay, so now we're this far, what we could do is we could have a little um, pressure test to understand the performance, the behaviour of our wastegate and actuator. It's a very weak spring. But if we want to be able to control the boost at low values, I'd say that's a good place to be. All we can do is try. If not, we need a different spring. So, right then, we'll put that back on the car. Just come back from a bit of a drive trying out this new ported out wastegate. Um, what we've done is, well, what I've done is I've played with these duty cycle settings here and I've found that 85% duty cycle and 0.8 bar boost, whatever that 0.8 is, gives me pretty good boost control. So let's have a look on the log here. Our white line is our boost, which that is. That's pretty good boost control, that is, I've got to say. And uh, how much boost are we making? Well, if we look at the top of the screen here, 4, 6. So that's just under half a bar of boost. Sometimes we make a little bit more, 0.5. But that's our boost control. And as you can see now with this jaggy line down here, our AFRs, are far better in control there's a nice long pull 
So you can see at the top the red line, so that's going to be second gear, third gear, fourth gear. So the longer the gear, the more steady the the data log you get is. So I think we've uh, we've nailed good boost control there. I might be able to get more more boost out of it if I up the boost value, but I think sort of this half a bar area is safe going. So I think we can say that the modifications to the wastegate have been a success and we've now got good boost control and we are less likely to blow the girl up. So we'll call that a success. We'll call that quits for part four. Uh, we've got the boost control sorted. Now for part five, we're going to finish off the charge cooler Pump it up, get some water through it, get some brackets on the go, and at that point we should have a pretty much fully functional turbo MR2. Thank you for watching the series so far. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing, and uh, I really appreciate it. Loads more followers over the last couple of weeks, uh, but anyway, no, thank you very much and enjoy. Till next time.